So we're back with Milo Yiannopoulos. So the first question now, Milo, is why did you become a journalist in the first place? Well, I always knew that I wanted to be paid to be me, um, just to get paid to do whatever I do already, um, just sort of annoying the worst people in the world and expressing my opinion about things, standing up for people who don't have a voice, I suppose, not to get too earnest or worthy about it, but a lot of my reporting is looking into internet communities who are lied about by the mainstream media or lied about by liberal establishment um, and trying to give them a platform from which to explain their side of the story. And I think most of my reporting does that. And, I, you know, um, I try not to get too serious any of the time, but if there was a serious point in anything that I do, it's that I, I do genuinely try to do what I think is the purpose of journalism, which is to give the, you know, give, give um, uh, voice to the voiceless. I think it's to stand up to authority. And these days, authority is left wing. These days, you know, the arts, politics, every, uh, academia, everything is, is, is ruled and led by the left. And sometimes they get things wrong. And very often they get things wrong. I personally think they get things wrong all the time. But most people would agree they get things wrong some of the time. And when they get things wrong some of the time, it's important for somebody out there somewhere to be sticking up for these guys who are brand misogynistic trolls and haters, particularly when the facts are simply not on the side of the establishment narrative, um, as indeed as they're not in the case of Game Again, um, you know, the facts are not on the side of the, of the media, it was never about uh, harassing women, and there's no evidence that any prominent sort of Game Again ever did, and in any case, as Gawker admits, you know, as with Black Lives Matter, um, you know, Gamergate is not a, 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 a club with a mem with membership requirements. Or professional organisation, it is a, it describes a broad set of ideals uh, that anyone can sign up to. So you can't blame individuals who claim that they're part of the movement for, the, for you know, uh, and tarnish the majority with their actions. Um, I think I became a journalist because I saw um, just outright rank extraordinary hypocrisy from people who I think, you know, don't have any basis or, uh, or justification to claim the moral high ground as they do, shitting on ordinary people who don't deserve it and who, deserve, uh, and who do deserve to have their opinions um, expressed more often because they tend, unlike the people who rule over us, to be right most of the time. Well, now for one of the uh, most important questions in the interview. Uh, what made you dye your hair blind and what keeps it so nice and fluffy? <laughs> We don't use the word fluffy in hairdressing. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just bouncy and lustrous. Um, yeah. Well, so you guys, when you get to 30, you're going to have a midlife crisis. Maybe a little bit later, you have a midlife crisis about 40, and you'll probably buy a Harley Davidson, um, I don't know, cheat on your wife, whatever. Uh, gay people get their midlife crisis 10 years earlier, and they do something like, like, like dye their hair. I, just, I, I, I thought it would be a fun thing to do for summer, and it's kind of stuck. So, <laughs> so um, what's your all time favourite story that you've covered? Oh, well, I mean, it has to be Game Again, there's no question about that. I think, um, you know, it's, it's defined my career to this point um, quite significantly. And I think I've done a reasonably good job of pissing off Game Again sometimes too, to remind them that I'm not a panderer or not in their pocket. Um, I don't temper my other political opinions because I know that they'll be popular or unpopular with, uh, you know, with, with Gamergate. I've written about abortion, I've written about all sorts of things that I know are not. Uh, popular opinions in Gamergate because it is primarily a left-wing movement, it's just not an authoritarian left-wing movement, it's more like left-wing, uh, left, you know, it's, it's, it's a left-wing libertarian movement, mm -hmm. I think, it's probably fair to say, yeah. um, so we should stick up from where we can because, we, you know, um, we, have, we have the same enemies, I think, as they do. Um, I think I've done a reasonable job of, of exposing lies and hypocrisy on the other side. Uh, I got on the story certainly very early, and it's um, it's probably the thing I'm most proud of because I think, um, as I was saying earlier, you know, I came to journalism to talk about the stories that matter and to it to. Um, stick up for people who don't have access to platforms and don't have a voice. Um, it's laughable to me that left-wing journalists claim that they're doing that when in fact they're sticking up for establishment consensus. They're not risking anything, you know? I took a risk professionally when I started reporting on Game of Game that I would forever be branded the guy that stuck up for misogynist trolls online. And to some extent, that's, that's true. Um, I will always be branded that. I will be fighting against that reputation for the rest of my life. And it's mostly as a result of sticking up for Game of Game. But I don't regret it for a second because they deserved it. And so, yeah, I mean, if, if I wanted to be self-congratulatory which of course is not in my nature. Um, I would, uh, I would say, Game Again is my, my, the thing I'm most happy with in my, in my career. So now for a uh, classic interview question: uh, okay. If you can invite three people, living or dead, to a dinner party, who would they be and why? Okay. Um, because I like to be the centre of attention, I would probably invite all women. Um, so <laughs> I think I'd have. 
I think you'd have Margaret Thatcher, who I was very lucky to meet just before she died a couple of times. Um, and is just the most, it's just the most extraordinarily magnetic presence. You know, just an incredible, there was an incredible sort of crackle in the room. And, and I've met other people who have this. Mariah Carey has this. Uh, George W. Bush has this. Um, and not all political leaders do. You know, Cameron doesn't have it. Um, I don't think any British politicians really have it. Um, that, that slightly magical sort of... Um, sharpness in the air or something around them. You know you're in the presence of greatness. Um, she was an extraordinary, just extraordinary human being irrespective of any, any particular opinion. Um, she's just somebody that any, I think anybody would be grateful to, to spend time with. Um, Anne Coulter, who I think is probably the funniest, most outrageous and hilarious and brilliant commentator in American journalism. I think she's wonderful. She's totally outrageous on the TV, winds up all the right people. Her books are brilliant and persuasive and clever and interesting. Um, I think she's a phenomenal force. She's been, what she's done very successfully is um, managed to, I think, do what Donald Trump does, and I think to some extent do what I try to do, which is uh, make it clear to the left that you care so little about their opinion that their attacks simply bounce off. She has this Teflon coating. Although I think, you know, after so many years, it probably is wearing her down now. I wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't write that many more books after the after the immigration one. But I think she's one of the most naturally funny and brilliant people that I, that is working in journalism today. The third person would be Joan Rivers, who I think is epitomizes the sort of genius go fuck yourself. I don't, have, I don't you know, I don't I don't care what you think, I'm gonna lay lay waste to myself and you. She's the ultimate model for drag queen people, which I love. Um, which is that read yourself before you read other people, you know? Um, and she I, she, I think, is probably the greatest comedian of the last hundred years. Because I know it's a big claim, and people like yeah. to have very um, uh, people like to express, you know, very high flip opinions about comedians sometimes, and say how sort of culturally significant, you know, John Stewart was and all the rest of it. I think Joan Rivers, in resisting the tide of political correctness, and certainly in those last interviews, where she you know she was asked if she wore fur by this sort of silly little, you know, woman on was it CNN maybe. Um, and she just shot, shot back. Are you wearing leather shoes? I don't want to fucking hear it. Are you wearing leather shoes? I'm out of here. And just walked out. And she just that sort of I don't give a toss. You know that great thing when she are we ever gonna have a gay president? We've got a gay president. We've got Obama. We've got Obama. Obama's a gay president. And that Michelle's a tranny. You know, it's just wonderful, outrageous, hilarious stuff. And the, the, the best story I'll tell you quickly about Joan Rivers is from her early stand-up career, um, which just made me love her forever. And it's it, it, it's it's that thing that's taboo now. It's getting coming to terms with. Um, pain through humour and realising that humour is actually a great way to relate to the world around you and to, to deal with your trials and tribulations. She, um, she told the story when her husband uh, hanged himself, I think, he killed himself somehow. And she wasn't in the house and Melissa, her daughter, got a phone call. And they said, you know, your dad's dead and all the rest of it. She, came, she comes home to find her daughter in tears and in a mess and she's like, what kind of an idiot would call my house and tell my daughter that her dad is dead? Like, what the fuck would anyway. Or so in um, Judaism, you sort of you have to stay in the house for a week and people come visit you. Know? Yeah. Uh, and um, so they did all this, and all this time, Melissa sort of wouldn't emerge from behind her fringe, and she wouldn't talk, she wouldn't talk, she wouldn't, she wouldn't relate to anybody. She just sort of went into sort of catatonic meltdown. And eventually, Joan said, Look, let's go out, go to dinner. Um, you know, I'm just trying to snap Melissa out of it. So they're sitting in the restaurant, and they both open the menus, and Melissa hasn't said a word. And Joan says, um, my God, if your dad could see these prices, he'd kill himself all over again. <laughs> you know, I just thought, this is the kind of woman I want to listen to. This is the kind of woman I want to go on to. You know, like, I want to, I want to go on her tours. I was lucky enough to meet her once. Um, so, yeah, I, they're my, yeah, those are my three. Patrick Coulter um, and Joan Rivers. I think they would all absolutely hate each other. Um, but I think it would be a fun bit of fun. And so, for the uh, last question... Oh question, so to speak. Can you give us your top fashion tips? Oh god. Um, well, as I'm getting older and putting on weight, which is um, basically makes me undateable and gay. I mean, I'm, I'm already 30, so in gay years, I'm, you know, to 90 or something. Uh, my top fashion tips would be, um, don't try to dress like anybody else. Just be you. Be prepared to be ridiculous and outrageous, because, you know, there's no such thing as bad attention. Um, and... Uh, I think for women, dressing has become really difficult because feminists are always telling women they should dress how they want, do what they want. Um, 
and it, it, well, it basically turns them into turns them into slobs, turns them into us, you know. I mean, we are horrible slobs. We are, you know, men are horrible slobs. Um, telling women that they're horrible slobs is, is a bad idea because uh, it makes women unhappy. Men don't want to have sex with them, and women who are single in their thirties go a bit nuts. Now that sounds a bit misogynistic, but the, the reality, the research is, uh, research says that women are much more depressed in their thirties if they're single than men are. More likely to attempt suicide. More likely to report that they're generally unhappy with life. Um, women deal less well with being single, so I think my primary piece of fashion advice to make a serious point out for this question, but uh, the primary piece of fashion advice is for women, and it is do not listen to these bizarre celebrities like Lena Dunham who tell you that you are beautiful at whatever weight or whatever you're wearing, whether you have armpit hair or leg hair or not. They're wrong. It's a lie. You're not. Look after yourself. Stay in shape and dress well, and you'll be happier.